the jam. I hate that ammo. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be mounting a rapid strike rifle scope from Firefield to this other uh, that is Cerakoted in FDE. Uh, this one is for customer use. So if they are on the fence and they want to try it out, we have one for them to use. Now in the previous videos, you guys have seen mine and I have a reflex sight from the same company. Uh, I wanted the reflex sight for what I was using this for and for this one since we're going to be doing a lot of bench shooting with it uh, at various ranges we wanted something that was going to be easier for some of our customers to be able to reach out to 100 yards uh, with a variable scope so let's go over what we're going to need obviously you need the scope you are going to need a mounting kit we carry uh, the Weaver mounting kits. It's great because it comes with a torque wrench and all the bits you're going to need. Can't go wrong. If you're going to be mounting optics uh, onto your rifles or your others, you're definitely going to want to have some sort of tool kit with a torque wrench. Uh, it would really suck for you to be at the range and uh, you squeeze the trigger and all of a sudden your optic falls off because you didn't torque it. Uh, seen it happen before so you don't want that to happen don't be that guy okay so one of the things uh, I should mention is this one has flip-ups for backups unfortunately I think when we mount the optic onto this it is gonna cover the rear sight rendering backups pretty much useless but that's okay uh, this optic itself even if the batteries are dead, you still have a reticle inside and you can use it just fine. The, the battery just illuminates the reticle either red or green just so it's easier to see. But even if the battery is dead or you just choose to shut it off, it's going to work just fine. So we'll have no problems, no need to run this particular set of irons. So some of the other things that I always like to have when mounting is a little thing of whiteout. Uh, and a black sharpie and if I have a silver sharpie that, that's what I usually use um, because me I like to uh, write where it sits on the rail on the bottom of the optic uh, especially for mine that's got that quick disconnect so when I pop it off I know exactly where to put it back so the zero doesn't change uh, the Picatinny rail on top of this uh, they're labeled T12, T10, T8, so on. Okay, so let's go over what's inside the package, what you're gonna get with this rapid strike. So obviously, first and foremost, you get the optic itself. Comes with the instructions, which I recommend you read the instructions cover to cover. Before you start messing around with any of this, make sure you're doing it right. It's going to have torque values in it, and if it doesn't, it's going to tell you to go to the manufacturer for the torque values. This mounting rail is by uh, uh, Vertex, so I had to look it up on their website, and the torque value on that is going to be 20 inch pounds. Inside we have the battery. We've got the mounting tool itself, so I'll put that in my little toolbox area. We've got the little tool to remove the cap to change out the batteries. Uh, they've got a cover to reduce glare. Cleaning cloth. And of course, your swift adjustment arm so you can really swing it from one to six on the fly which we may mount that afterward okay. so 
when you get these, the screws on the bottom are going to be, on this one it was tight, I took the liberty of backing them off. So when you sit it on there, on the bottom there's these little teeth and they have to sit inside the grooves. So, this one seems to fit pretty nicely right here. Now, you can't just tighten it down and go to town. Uh, sorry, you can't see me. So what you want to do is you're going to want to tighten it down uh, with the tool, hand tight, and then you're going to want to see if it's a good spot for eye relief. You may have to move it forward or you may have to bring it back a little bit. It all depends on your eye relief. My eye relief is a little different than anyone else's. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and set it to somewhere that's more generic so more people can use it. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do is put it on here and I'm going to scotch it down. Now you don't want to do both forward and both then go to the back. So you want to do one in the front, then one in the back, then go to the front and put the front just tight enough to where it's not going to come right off if you're moving the carving or the other around. Okay. So it's on there. I can't wiggle it. So now I set it to the highest power and that's how you're going to check your eye relief. You're going to have to move it around um, and then you'll be good to dial it down to, to one. All right. So I have a clear shout out to the parking lot. It's completely empty. So I'll be able to flip these up and I'm not going to be pointing uh, the other at anybody else. So this looks good to me. So, what I like to do next is, so I know exactly where it's sitting, put it back in the cradle, this, this is time consuming, we're going to take it off, and we're going to mark where it goes. I'll save you guys some time with that, I'll just have it off. Okay, so I took it back off, and I know that this front tooth sits right in T12, so all I'm going to do I'm going to take my white out. I'm going to mark this, and then with the black sharpie, I'll write on there T12, and I know that this sits in T12. The other option you have is you can use a, a paint pen, and you can mark the individual grooves in here. Uh, you can do it color coded, and then put dots on the bottom, color code each optic that you want to run. Uh, such as mine, mine's the quick disconnect, so I can easily pop the reflex side off and put on a different variable optic. I don't want to mar up my other, so I just put everything on, on the scope and then all the optics are carried within my uh, vertex case. Okay, so as you can see, I marked it and it says T12, and now I can put this on, because it is dry, Make sure I line it up, roll it on, and then take the tool back out, holding it, and then I will tighten it down. So I'm going to start finger tight. Like I said, you go back and forth, front and then back, front and back. I'm going to make sure they're all finger tight. Okay. So I'm going to finger tight. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to break out the torque set. <clears throat> I'm going to set the torque. Okay. So as a torque wrench, I set it for 20 inch pounds. It comes with all the tips that you're going to need to mount. And I'm going to put it in. I'm going to torque it. When I hit 20 inch pounds, I should hear a click. Right there. 
Now I'm gonna move to the back. So I did one up front. I'm gonna do the one in the back. It did it. So now I'm gonna go up to the front one again. And now back to the last one in the back. And it clicked. So now I know that the screws on the mount are all torqued. Now if you want, these also have torque values. These torque values are supposed to be set to 16. So you can always use your torque wrench to double check them. The problem is if they're already torqued, torquing them again could possibly over torque them, backing them off, and retorquing them. You might move the optic. Right now it's from the factory, it's torqued, it's good to go. I suggest you just leave it alone. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna install is the throw lever. And it comes with a little tiny Allen wrench. Now, putting it on, it's not gonna fit back here. So what you have to do is you have to back this screw all the way out. And you gotta be careful not to lose these screws. Okay, so now that's popped all the way open. This piece slides right off and it's opened up to where you can open it up, slide it on. I know you probably can't see anything, but put it on here. Take your throw lever, you line that back up. I am going to align this on one. I'm going to tighten the screw down a little. Okay, so the throw lever is mounted. It's aligned, uh, it's down finger tight. It's not moving. It's set to one right now, so it's over here, and then you can quickly flip it all the way over to six. Almost straight up and down is gonna be three, back to one. And this is gonna help you, obviously, adjust the optics on the fly. Food for thought. What I like to do afterwards is I collect the tools in a little bag. Got the extra the battery because I've already put one in. So I have an extra battery here. I'm gonna put that in the bag. And it's all together in a nice little bag. But it's so small you might easily lose it. Okay. This is just to make sure everything's protected and it's weather tight. Well, there's a really nice spot to stick it. You can put it right in your forward grip. This pops right off and you can stick all your extra tools in there that you need for the optic. Just in case, while you're out and about, <clears throat> away from home, if you need to make an adjustment, you can do it. Okay, so now that you've mounted the optic, and if you don't feel comfortable doing it, we can do it for you, we do it all the time. We have to zero this. So we're gonna start with, um, we have a, a round that we load in here, and it's a laser, and then we'll make the windage and elevation adjustments to the laser, and then we'll go out on the range and zero it from there for 100 yards. Okay, so I know we discussed zeroing the scope and it's a couple of days later uh, right after I made the video we came out to try and zero it and 
felt like I was back at boot camp. We, we couldn't get it to zero at all. Um, I tried, various other people tried. We were all over the map, so I don't know why. Uh, might have been we were adjusting the MOAs uh, a little bit wrong. So it was late in the day. We figured we'd uh, give it a break and uh, come back to it afterward. So now I'm down here and hopefully I can zero it. All right, so after a lot of hee-hawing around trying to, to find it, I think I've got it dialed in now. Um, the way I like to do it is I do three shots and then uh, take those three, you know, triangulate, and then uh, obviously count the clicks and, and do the adjustments. Alright, so I think I finally got it zeroed. Uh, dialed in. Uh, it's pretty good. Alright, so I'm going to flip the camera and uh, we'll take a look. When I first started shooting, obviously I'm aiming at this. And uh, I was hitting out here. Uh, so then I aimed at this target. And I was able to put two right here. And I saw those. I couldn't see these in the in the scope. So then I walked it in, and I was hitting here and here. Uh, so dialed it in. Then I started aiming up here, and started out here. Slowly walked it in, and uh, wasn't too bad. And then of course the last round I shot. Uh, was right there. So these were a little high, and this is where I thought I had it dialed in. And I took one shot and nailed it. So it's good enough for me.